I'm just providing a quick video and using the parameter settings. Um, and so what we can do is we come in here and we can set different parameter settings. So in this case, I want to vary my mesh size. So I'm going to make my overall element size, as well as I've defined a, a I'm sorry, that was a face sizing parameter. And then I also have defined the overall element size to the, to the elements. And I'll specify that as a parameter. Typically, you want some input parameters, which would be, for example, those. It could also be, for example, magnitudes of forces. And then some output parameters. So in this case, my output parameters are the number of nodes and the values of some of these stresses, the, the max values. So let's go back to the workbench setup. And we can see now that there is uh, this parameter set. We'll open that up. You can see my outline of parameters. I have input parameters. So the mid-surface, that's actually left over from that had a, a thickness and is irrelevant now. But I have my two element sizes. And then <coughs> I have the uh, max outputs of principal stresses. I have some mesh quality um, values. That's this average and min is. And I, you can see I have the number of mesh nodes and max principal stress and a maximum equivalent stress. I come in here, I have a number of design points. Um, this thickness is all relevant now. Let me just change those all to be the same value to avoid any confusion. Um, but what I might be interested in doing is changing my body element size. And I'm going to change the units here from meters to millimeters. Um, so this is zero because it's just using the default. And the default was about 7 millimeters. So let's do a couple of 7, and let's see what happens if we change that to 3. And typically, to test these, you really want to go in, in values of about a factor of 2. Actually, in the face of the S solving, I will go with a larger one this time, rather than smaller. Okay. Set some body element sizing and face size element. So let's look and compare the results with. So let's see again, let's change these units to millimeters. So we'll start out with seven, three, one, whoops. So seven, so it'll be the same. We'll essentially act as none. We have one. And let's go to point 0.5, and then let's see what happens if we um, do the 3, 1, point 0.5, not even go point 0.25, but with the, with the larger overall mesh. See which one, uh, see how those results compare. Now, I can come up here and update all design points, so that'll run, might run for a while. Um, I can also come and, and select like three of these, right click and say update select design points. So I'm going to let that start running and I'll pause that while it does. Okay. And so I went ahead and ran all the design points and you can see here that now um, we have max, we have a minimum max principle stresses, the von Mises stress for each of these the number of mesh nodes, which kind of gives us an idea of the efficiency, and then the, uh, the calculated value uh, that we can all compare to. And this is really nice. You can, um, you can, you can take this information and put it into Excel to make plots and things so that you can efficiently track your, get your data out and, and get a lot of results and study the dependence on parameters very easily. So this is something I'd encourage you to start using from this uh, first assignment.